Hello everyone and welcome to Mail, this time for the month of June 2017. So all of the mail that you sent in June 2017 has arrived here and we are about to open it. Starting with our featured letter, which is from... Amber in Sisterville, uh, Sistersville, West Virginia. <laughs> in a Sisterville. <laughs> one of the villages for sisters. I'm not cutting it out, I'm moving on. Dear Stephen Amell, Hello, my name is Amber and I live all the way in Sistersville, West Virginia, or a village for sisters. I have watched your videos since Skyrim and have tuned in many times to the vlogs and let's plays you have posted. I found both your channels through searching for a walkthrough of Skyrim because I was very new to the Elder Scrolls and didn't want to get lost as soon as, start, as soon as I started the game. The humor really got to me and I was able to start off right. Plus, managed to get around to most of the quests. I'm probably picking up where I left off as I'm writing this letter. I've watched Chugga's Let's Plays of Pokemon, Zelda, uh, and other titles before finding your channels, but it was only after after watching the old vlogs and watching the videos of when you went to Camp Fangamer that I heard about Earthbound and how it inspired you. I bought Earthbound from the virtual console to see what I was missing, and boy, did I make a really amazing purchase. So thank you for introducing me to Earthbound. Since I have been a gamer and lover of anime since childhood, I do cosplay from time to time when Teco rolls around. Teco is our local anime, gaming, fashion, and culture convention in my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I would highly recommend it and would really like to get the word out because of how wonderful it is. So, if you ever get the chance, I hope we someday see you there. Stephen Mallory, I would also like to thank you for showing me back in the old vlogs that long distance relationships do work out. My boyfriend Sean and I have been together for nine years now and we both have bonded over Pokemon and many other titles. He and I play Magic the Gathering as well and are always excited for new packs and lore from the series. We've been planning on seeing each other again in New Hampshire this September, and he is going to take me to a local fair going on at the beginning of October. We also plan on heading up to Mount Washington for a hiking trip, so thank you both for inspiring me and giving me hope. Sean and I will continue together on this journey and work hard to achieve our goals in the future. Thank you, and let's meet back tomorrow, shall we? Sincerely, Amber. Oh, and P.S. I would like to recommend watching Steven Universe when you get time. It's full of amazing music, artwork, and filled with a lot of heart. Amber, thank you for uh, for that letter, and I wish you and Sean the absolute best. Although I gotta say, nine years is a long time. Yeah. So uh, you're you're doing great. <laughs> I think I think like being able to be around someone for nine years is like a really good indication that you get along pretty good. <laughs> Because otherwise, I don't know if you could last quite yeah. quite nine years. So, once again, uh, thanks for thanks for writing. I'm glad that you found the channels. I'm glad that you found Earthbound. And uh, maybe at some point, if we get up that way to Pittsburgh, we will check out Teco. Now, in addition to the featured leather from Amber, we also have two other things to um, point out very quickly. We had a uh, really cool postcard that came in from Joel and it says, failure is not an option. Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, which I know you desperately want I to. I want to go. I, you desperately want to see. At some point, we'll get there, because it's awesome. I've been like three times, maybe twice, maybe three times. I don't remember, but it's really great. I can't remember, but I'm like, it's great. <laughs> I can't remember anything in, the, in there, but it's great. Just trust me. Um, and then we also have um, a third uh, letter from Courtney, who I wanted to point out because she sent us some recipes and she actually included the permission slips uh, for both curry, uh, curry. curry. I, it's curry, but I said curry because I, been I've been playing a lot I've been playing Fallout, so I'm like, we're gonna cook up some companions today. Come on into the kitchen with Paula Dean and also sweet and sour meatballs. I was gonna try and turn that into a Fallout companion name, but I. I couldn't do it. Sweet and strong Hancock balls. Whoa, man, I should have thought that through for like a split second before it came out of my orifice. Uh, anyway, Courtney, thank you for sending in um, the recipes. And also, for anyone else watching, uh, you can keep sending in recipes. I know that people get a little discouraged. They're like, that cookbook's not, doesn't seem to be happening. We're saving all of these, so whenever you send in a recipe and the permission slip, which you can get by going to stephengeorge.com slash... Mail? I think it's stephengeorge.com slash cookbook, but it might be slash vlog slash cookbook. 
I'll put a link on the screen with text and you'll you'll be able to know what it is, but you can get the uh, permission slip there. We're still collecting them. We still are uh, planning to do the cookbook. And then also a really cool mandala? Mandala. I, I think it's mandala. Mandala, that's what they're called. It's really nice. These things are beautiful. They really are. I think it's this way. Because yes. this is the signature. Mm -hmm. And those things are those things are absolutely gorgeous. And the amount of detail and work that goes into them is just crazy. So Courtney, thank you for sending this our way. And that finishes up the leathers for this month. And now we're going to jump into the packages, of which there are quite a few. Mallory, who's the first package from? Well, the first one is from a company, David's Tea. Oh. So we're going to open that first. Tea as in tea. Or tea, tea as, as in, in the tea. drink. Okay. I smell something. I'll give you this. <laughs> is it tea? I think it might be. It might be tea. Uh, so there's a little form in here. Um, it doesn't have a gift it note. It is tea. Um, it, is, it is from Sophie in uh, Norwalk. Ohio. Ohio, I believe. So Sophie sent us some tea. And it just says, thank you for your order. But there's no like gift message. That's that's from David's tea. Yeah. <laughs> Sophie didn't say thank you for your order. That would be preposterous. These flavors are really cool. You wanna hear them? Yes, I do. So we have toasted walnut green tea. That's interesting. Strawberry rhubarb parfait fruit infusion. And um, that's like an herbal tea, and I love herbal tea because caffeine. Because I can caffeine. only have caffeine before like noon. If I have it after noon, I can't sleep. There, and there's actually, there's a little write up under it, and yeah. it says, this deep red blend tastes as bright and juicy as a fresh picked berry with a tart rhubarb punch and a subtle hint of yogurt creaminess. Hmm. Seriously though, wow, that's okay. This one is goji pop fruit infusion. Hmm. Fruit infusion. Le Legend has it that Li Ching Yen lived for 256 years. His secret, goji berries. Your secret, this tea. Um, this one's a bit bigger, so it's like for a few teas. Mm -hmm. And it says strawberry shake green tea, which sounds amazing because that's wild. Green tea is like my other favorite tea. Yeah. And I actually, I also will, um, I'll also drink green tea from time to time. I know people probably associate me with the south and therefore sweet tea or you know cold sweetened you black also tea. drink like black tea like hot black tea i'll drink hot black tea and then occasionally also green tea or white tea or red tea things like that um this one is jasmine creme brulee green tea what rich and creamy with a delicate hint of jasmine this decadent tea tastes just like a creme brulee right down to the crunchy sugar topping that is a very boasty claim to make. Can you make a tea that tastes like creme brulee? Ingredients, apple, jasmine tea, rose hip shells, pineapple, sugar, sweet blackberry leaves, marigold flowers, and natural and artificial flavoring. Huh. I mean, if they actually can, that's wild. Can you imagine tasting a green tea and being like, hmm, I think someone may have dropped creme brulee in this. <laughs> like that's, that's crazy. Uh, Sophie, thank you so much. Uh, this is very kind, and um, I, I don't. I'm, I, we may have gotten tea before, but I'm not even sure. And if we have, it's been a while. Yeah, it's definitely been a while. But these are like really interesting flavors. And uh, Mao and I are both tea drinkers. Um, we're both coffee drinkers, but I'm the only one who does hot coffee. Yeah, I mean, I'll drink it, but I prefer cold. Um, but we both uh, we're both tea drinkers, so this is awesome. I can't wait to try these out, especially the creme brulee one. Of all of them, I think that's the one that strikes me the most. Like, I think the rhubarb parfait. I'm sure they're all be good. Yeah. But like creme brulee, creme brulee tea. That I really gotta try. Anyway, Sophie, thank you so much for sending this our way. Our next package is from Rooster Teeth. It's. Ruby Volume 4 Why am I doing this to the Flintstones theme? <laughs> I don't I do not have an answer. That's just how my brain works occasionally 
That's my that's my my song. Good. Um, I know who this is from. Yes. I don't know if there's a gift note in there. There's not. Uh, this is from Jacqueline, aka uh, Firestar, um, who gave us uh, the previous copies. Yeah, the first volumes. The first volumes of Ruby. So uh, thank you, Jacqueline, for sending this our way. Uh, Ruby's actually something that we're going to be watching soon. Let's see, by the time you guys get this video, yeah, it'll be after because the mail is coming before the vlogs are coming. Does that make sense? We're living a moment in the future that you guys aren't to yet on the vlogs. But at some point in the future, we're going to be watching uh, Ruby. And apparently there's four volumes. I wonder, and I don't know this, you guys will have to answer this, Are is that... Like, is it something that they're just planning to continue indefinitely? Or do they have, like, a roadmap for the show where they're like, this is gonna be the end? Because I'm curious about that. Like, is there going to be, you know, an, an ending to it or something that they have planned? I do not know. At the top of this thing, it also says, it's also a gun special edition. Like, the name of the special edition volume is called, it's also a gun. <laughs> I'm hoping that that's a really sweet one-liner. Anyway, Jacqueline, thank you. Our next package is from Matthew in Kitchener, Ontario. And... I didn't cut this for you. <laughs> you handed me a box and you're like, use your bare hands. You wanna, you wanna see my, my strength? <laughs> Just <laughs> Oh yeah! Snap into a Slim Jim! Snap into a Slim Jim! Oh God, the box fell apart. It's fine. It's fine. Just move along. It's not a problem. All right. Um, Matthew sent us a lot of bags, but presumably there's some things in the bags. Oh my goodness. So some time ago, Matthew uh, sent us a collection of assorted Canadian goodies that go into your mouth. Um, and I've been enjoying them. In fact, I might have them all gone. I think you I have, have one, one box. box that's like open already. Yeah, but it's the last one. I, I don't. Canada's got their snacks on lockdown for whatever reason. We could take some serious lessons from the Canadians. Um, let me show you. Yeah. These. <gasps> Ooh, those are so good. These are so good. Now we do have maple cookies in the states. But I don't think they're this good. And the only way you can get some that come close to being this good is the ones at Trader Joe's. And that place is way too far away. I mean, to be fair, Canada's further away, but not if someone mails you a box of these. These are awesome. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, I don't know what else is in here, but let's take a peek. There's also... Are these cookies. Are these more maple cookies? <laughs> what? But they say birthday cookies. Birthday Cheese flavored icing. Oh my god, they look good. They do look good. They look like red velvet. We should try them. <laughs> right now? Yeah. I love cream cheese. Oh my god, they smell so good. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Canada, what? They're really good. What are you doing? There's like a, a raspberry... Mm -hmm. Thing in like there the is. back of your mouth. Yeah, as soon as you started to say that, I started to taste that. It's really faint, but it's there. Holy cow. Man, those are good. Okay, thank you again. Canada really likes their maple leaf though. Like, they're really proud that that's like their symbol. That's, they're making all their cookies in that shape. That said, I mean, that's, like, that's fine. We have the eagle. Yeah, but you don't eat eagles. <laughs> you don't They're get, endangered, yes. No, I mean, like, you don't get, like, eagle cookies. I'm sure you can. Anyway, um, let's see what else is in here. <gasps> oh, my God. Uh, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like a real Canadian. I have a Tim Hortons. Oh, my God, there's, there's one for each of us. Look at this. We have matching Tim Hortons. I, I feel, you know what I feel? I feel like I'm an honorary Canadian now. These are pretty. They have like a nice little gradient. They are actually, they're very there's pretty. a beaver and there's a moose because of course there's a moose. Canada's an interesting place. We should visit. We should visit. And also they got really good snacks. And Tim Hortons. I would visit Tim Hortons a lot. 
The, well, there's um, what's the con that's there? Momo? Is it Momocon that's there, or is that the Atlanta con? I get that one, and I get the two confused all the time. I think it's Momo. Did it just happen? I think Momocon is the one that's Canada and not Atlanta, but I bet I have it wrong. Anyway. We should go to that sometime. Also, I like having a vast collection of different mugs. Mm-hmm. So. This is, okay, thank you. This is awesome. Like I said, I really feel like, you have made me feel like an honorary um, Canadian. Tim Horton's K-Cups. Yes. Which is awesome. Uh, we actually still have some. I actually had a cup this morning. <laughs> I had a cup of Tim Horton's. We have to ration them. We do. Because they're so good. They are, they're very, it's really good coffee. Mm -hmm. Like I am, I won't lie. I love Dunkin' Donuts coffee, but Tim Hortons gives it a run for its money. It's like a Canadian, it's the Canadian cousin for good coffee. So that's good. There's actually a leather that I probably should have went, jumped into <laughs> first, but I saw cookies and my brain was like, cookies. Um, so let me pull- Here, I'll hold this while you get that out. Let me pull the last two things out of here. And then, because they're a little more detailed, and then we'll go over the leather very quickly um, that talks about cookies. Stephen and Mallory, by the time you read this leather, Canada will have celebrated a significant milestone in its history. On July 1st, Canada will have celebrated its 150th birthday. Suffice to say, Can Canadians everywhere have been celebrating the occasion in their own various and diverse ways. So on behalf of the people of Canada, I'd like to share with the two of you this special package celebrating Canada in a way that would uh, that you would appreciate. First, we're aware that you have recently finished watching Seinfeld, one of the most popular American sitcoms of all time, so I'd like to give you the complete DVD collection of what is regarded as the greatest Canadian sitcom of all time, Corner Gas. I have never heard of this show. Corner Gas. Okay, let me pull out one of the, um... Man. That... That is a Canadian looking show. Specifically this guy. <laughs> the guy with the green hat? Yeah, the guy who, like... I guess he just kind of resembles a farmer to me that just shouts Canada, and then you have like the the farm on the back. Okay, I've never heard of, of Corner Gas. Um, this six season show, which takes place in a farming community in Saskatchewan, shows off the various crazy situations that the residents get into, and the bizarre ways in which the situations are dealt with, which will certainly have you laughing. The show may have a number of Canadian-centric uh, references, but this is one of the most internationally syndicated Canadian TV shows ever, and you will certainly find out why it has gained the love around the world that it has. Next, I'm sending to you something that is quintessentially Canadian. Over the years, people have sent you coffee from Canada's greatest fast food chain's importance, but no one has ever given the two of you something to drink said coffee from. That is why the two of you are receiving limited edition Tim Hortons coffee mugs, so next time you get some Tim Hortons coffee from your Canadian viewers, you now have something to drink them in. Next, some Canadian snacks for the both of you. These include a box of special edition Dare Maple Cream Cookies. Also because Americans are our neighbors, we Canadians have embraced your most popular food fad, Red Velvet. That is reflected in these special edition compliment cookies, which are the perfect harmony of Can Canada and America. It's also the perfect harmony of food entering into my mouth because it was really fantastic. Those were really good. They were really good. Um, to complete this package, I'm sending you some CDs of some of the greatest music that Canada has to offer. First, we know how much the two of you enjoy the music of They Might Be Giants, but I do not believe we have ever uh, gotten your opinion on the music of their Canadian counterparts, the Bare Naked Ladies. So you are receiving the CDs that have my favorite songs by them. Also, always remember They Might Be Giants may have given us the theme music to Malcolm in the Middle, but the Bare Naked Ladies gave us the theme to The Big Bang Theory. Then there's my favorite album by a Canadian band that recently went into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the counterculture rock band. And Rush. This particular album has some of the band's most iconic songs and fans of American bands like Green Day and Rage Against the Machine will find a lot of enjoyment from the music of Rush. Uh, the last CDs I am giving to the two of you are Bittersweet. They are part of the music of the greatest Canadian rock band that you have never heard of. This band known as the Tragically Hip have been around for 30 years and their music is iconic in Canadian culture as some of their greatest songs use the lyrics to tell of Canadian history. What makes this bittersweet is that last year, shortly after the release of their most recent album, their lead singer, Gord Downey, was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor. The band proceeded to go on tour with the final concert of the tour being broadcast on network television and preempting coverage of the Olympics. 
We want the band's legacy to become greater known to our American neighbors, and so we hope that you will listen to their music and come to appreciate the significance that the Tragically Hip has in our country, and that you will come to understand why we love them as much as we do. As you can see, this Canadian package is a great reflection of what the both of you enjoy, from TV shows to food and drink and music. This is a package that is truly tailored to you and shares with you the best of Canada. Enjoy the package and share our very best with your family and friends. Respectfully yours, Matthew, also known as Novara Autism. Matthew, this was a awesome package. And like I said, it truly makes me feel uh, like an, an honorary Canadian. Um, and the music that you spoke of is music that I am familiar with. I guess I've never given a, an opinion on Bare Naked Ladies. And even though I don't have, like I'm not familiar with like their entire discography like I am some bands, I'm actually familiar with a fair bit of, uh, of their music and actually, a bajillion years ago, when before the vlog, when we were still doing Fobbies or Borange, which was our Earthbound radio show, we actually used um, the Bare Naked Lady song Shopping, uh, which is a very lesser known song. We actually used that in an episode. So that's a little tidbit. I also have an aunt who loves them. They come down to Wisconsin a lot. Oh, yeah. And she'll go to like each of the concerts, like Chicago and Milwaukee and like the ones around there. And she'll drive like quite a ways to go to them. And she has like quite a few pictures with her in the band. She like I've I've seen her Twitter from time to time, mm -hmm. and like half of her Twitter posts are about about, about the bare naked yeah. ladies. Um, and like um, her kids know them, like yeah, and I've she plays the music in the car and. And uh, I actually, I've kept up with them a little bit on social media because um, they're really big into pinball for, I, I don't know what the story is behind that, but I think it's one of the lead singers or several members of the band is like really big into pinball and has like a pinball machine collection. And I've always found pinball very fascinating. So that was something. And actually they did, um, God, they did a song a while back in one of the music videos for, the, for that song is like just like pinball machines or something. So they did really cool stuff. Anyway, um, so yeah, there's all sorts of things here. Oh, Carly had this album. I recognize this cover art. Bare Naked Ladies Maroon? Yeah. Uh, Bare Naked Ladies uh, Gordon, which I think is probably one of the most popular albums. Um, I don't know why, but that name strikes me for some reason. Um, Rush, which is a... Uh, a really fantastic band, a, a very, what's the word I'm looking for? People have very strong opinions about Rush, I think. Uh, I like Rush, but there's people that I feel like are very divided for whatever reason. Some people really like Rush, some people are like, do not like Rush. You wanna know who's a huge fan of Rush? Do you know? No. One of our friends is like, Rush is their favorite band. Michael. 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 Michael's favorite band is Rush. So, Tom, hmm. Tom Sawyer is probably their, their most favorite song, their most famous song. Okay, I know that song. Yeah. Anyway, that's fantastic. And then also, um, the two albums by The Tragically Hip, Your Favorites, and uh, Man Machine Poem. I can, uh, I can honestly say I've never heard of The Tragically Hip. There may be a song or something that I... I'll know whenever I hear it, but um, the name itself I don't think I've ever I've ever heard of. So, anyway, Matthew, this was a fantastic package. Uh, thank you so much for supplying us with uh, a show and food and music and coffee and coffee. I'm I'm gonna feel like a true Canadian. <laughs> Our next package is from Nigel in Auburn, Washington. And we open it up. Sorry. Snap into a Slim Jim again. And let's see, what is, oh, there's there's a lot of stick-based products in here. Let's see what this says. Dear Stephen Amell, hi. This is my first time writing to you, so I guess I should introduce myself. My name is Nigel, I'm from Hong Kong, but I'm studying in a college in Auburn, Washington now for an associate degree in aviation. Where should I start? I can't seem to remember when I found your vlog channel, Stephen. Probably through Chugga Conroy's videos or the Runaway Guys tournaments? I started by watching the vlogs that have Chugga in them and started to watch the new vlogs whenever you release them since around March 2016. I've been watching some of the older vlogs in recent months, but I still haven't had the 
the time to officially start the journey yet. Perhaps come summer? As for Steven Plays, I've been watching your Fallout 4 and Ocarina of Time series, or should I say the Potato of Time, which have been great fun. It brings me laughs while being thousands of miles away from uh, family and friends. Shame that I don't have the time and equipment to do the same. Actually, I was inspired by you and started a vlogging channel called Nigel Vlogs in April of last year. Up until now, I've uploaded around 70 vlogs or so, but I have been losing steam. Could you tell me what makes you keep vlogging when it hasn't become uh, your habit yet? I would love to know. The best advice I could give in terms of uh, keeping up with it is, like, for people that haven't started, I often give them the advice that, you know, you don't have to feel compelled to jump into doing you know, uh, a daily vlog. Daily vlog. Mm -hmm. That's my that's my best advice for people starting out. Is don't feel compelled that you have to jump into something like that. Uh, doing something weekly is a really great alternative. I even had a friend that did a monthly micro vlog. He said that he was going to basically film, and this was before Vine, but he he invented Vine, I guess, because he would record like five seconds of something a day, and then at the end of the the month, he would put it together as one video. And he had just a very short video, but it just brought all these memories back of everything that mm -hmm. happened in the month. And by the end of the year, he did this video and it's like 20 minutes long, and you got to experience his entire year in 20 minutes. It was super cool. So um, my suggestion would be, you know, don't feel like you, you have to do something. Um, you know, let the inspiration come to you. You know, if you're not, if you're not vlogging every single day anyway, then just wait for the opportunity to strike where you're like, this is something interesting that I want to keep for myself. You know, there's something that's happening that I want to remember very, you know, well, yeah. in, in detail. That's when I would say you should be, you know, vlogging. I was watching your December 2016 mail video while writing this letter and oh my god, Mal actually watched Doctor Who. You should definitely find time to watch it, Stephen. I started watching Doctor Who back when my English teacher showed uh, my class a few episodes in grade 8 or 9 and I immediately fell in love with it. But if you want to get the best understanding of the lore theories and the awesome bits of the show, I recommend watching Season 3's episode of Blink first, which should explain it quite well. Sorry for rambling for so long, especially for the Doctor Who bit. I'll try to find time to write you guys some more and perhaps sending you things which aren't stick-based. Best regards, Nigel. Uh, Nigel, thank you for the leather, and thank you for the stick-based products. What's that? Which are in here. This is, um, I don't know, this is some, I thought it was just holding the stuff inside, but it's actually it's some sort of- It's a map of Japan, it's a, and their regional pretzel stuff, like for each region. You gathered a lot more out of that than I did. It's like Hokkaido, Hok Hokkaido, and then like Tokyo. And then oh yeah, like I see it. Now that you've pointed out, I see it. So there's special pretz you can only get in certain places in Japan? I think so. That's interesting. Is that what that is? Maybe, yeah. Okay, so what's that one? This is the apple pretz. Yeah, that's from here. Oh, okay. And this is the, is this, is this like sausage or hot dog pretz? Is that that one is thing? down here. Is that what that is? Yeah, I, I don't know. It might be. Okay. Um, there's also Eiffel Tower Pretz. That's Tokyo. That's in Tokyo, that thing. It's not an Eiffel Tower. No. It's Tokyo Tower. It's the Tokyo Tower. <laughs> the Eiffel Tower, located in Tokyo. Which <laughs> it's a different color. A lot of scent. Yeah, it's also the wrong color. Is that wasabi? Uh, yeah, that's yeah, wasabi. Yeah, that's wasabi. Wow, wasabi that Pretz? That one's here. <laughs> um, some sort of... Oh, those are um, takoyaki. Oh, they are takoyaki. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks like. Or not like, taco? Uh, is it? <laughs> no, it's takoyaki. Okay. That's um, the octopus balls. I had to think about that yep. for a few seconds. Uh, and then also uh, grilled meat. Yakiniku. Yeah, yakiniku. And which that's we like ate. the the sundari region. Also, man, I wonder if that tastes like grilled meat. Um, lemon. Lemon, Just lemon is lemon. over here. Green tea, matcha. Green tea is down here. And then cheese or butter, I'm not sure what that cheese one is. Cheese or butter is this. Hokkaido. I really want to know. What the yakiniku one tastes like? Like, did they get the, the taste of See, I want to know what the lemon one tastes like. The lemon one? Or the apple one. But that's, that's stuff Or the wasabi one. But those are all things, well, wasabi, not so much, but like those are like actual flavors that things taste like. No one, oh my God. Wait. No one does, no one does stuff that 
tastes, tastes like, like steak. Yeah, that's such a strange. Oh my god. They did a pretty good job with that. They really did. Mm -hmm. That. Yeah, that tastes like steak. Wow. That is like eating seared beef. Anyway, Nigel, thank you so much for the leather and then also for sending these stick based products our way. Our next package is from Franklin in Elgin, Illinois. And Franklin sends a package with a leather. So we'll start here. Uh, to Stephen from Franklin, enjoy extra cheats. Uh, extra treats courtesy of my mom and sis. Dear Stephen Amell, Franklin here. I wanna start by saying congratulations on getting your new house. I know I'm late saying it, but congratulations. Now you do not have to worry about difficult neighbors or your ceiling melting because of leaks from upstairs neighbors. Also good choice having Dan edit your LPs. All the projects he will edit will pull plenty of stress off of you, which will help all of us in the long run. All the little edits he does are hilarious, like the train movie in GTA Online, and of course the spirit medallions in Ocarina of Time, passing gas. I could not write that with a straight face. I want to tell you guys something exciting that I'm doing this summer. I'm going to the Grand Canyon. Since my vision teacher has lots of connections, she happened to see this uh, flyer across her desk one day. It was a trip to the Grand Canyon. Since the National Park Service is turning 100 years old, they're partnering with No Barriers and Leading the Way, two organizations that help people with disabilities, to go to the Grand Canyon with 22 students chosen from all across the U.S. Of the 22 students, 11 of them have no disabilities, while the other 11 have some kind of vision-related disabilities. Somehow, I am one of the 11 blind students. That is awesome! Our trip is in July, and we will be working with scientists from the National Park Service to conduct uh, sound-based experiments in the canyon as well as camping, hiking, rafting down the Colorado River, and taking in the feel of the canyon. Since you guys went to the Grand Canyon once, even though you got rained out, I thought you would like to hear about this. Edit, I just watched an episode of Fallout and heard you were going to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, because I knew that like we talked about it, mm -hmm. I was just wondering like when in relation to all this stuff. So that's cool. Anyways, time for candy. If you look in the box, you should see, for Steven, uh, Mazapan, and for Mal, Gancito. Uh, let's see. There's a, a lot of things in here. There's quite here's, a few. Here's the Goncito. That's, that's for you. And the marzipan is here. Marzipan. Covered with chocolate. And it says, uh, uh, the marzipan is a candy made with peanut sugar and artificial flavors. So they are peanuts, they're mine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it says they are sweet and melt in your mouth. Warning, these things are very crumbly and messy, so be careful with, when opening and eating them. The big challenge one has is to open it without breaking it. Good luck. Gancitos are a small rectangular snack cake similar to a Twinkie. They look amazing in the picture. They have like a, a f jam and then like a frosting and they're covered in chocolate. They should be able to see that. Yeah, I should hold that up. <laughs> Mal's like, let me describe. Let me look at oh, this. Yeah, you, you don't get to actually see. Um, it says, uh, they are filled with a layer of strawberry jelly and a creamy filling. Then they are covered in chocolate and a few chocolate sprinkles added on top. It's basically what, um, there's an American company that does that. But, but not as good as that. Also, they don't have this really cool duck character. I'm I'm happy, you, happiest you about duck, the little. Can you do a duck voice and say Gancito? Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, the first duck <laughs> fell down the, some stairs. We're getting a new duck. <laughs> do we get the second duck in here? <laughs> I don't actually know how to do this, so it's not gonna work. But I'm willing to try. <laughs> Hold on, give me a minute to think. <laughs> Daffy, Daffy, no, not Daffy Duck, Donald Duck. Do Daffy Duck doesn't sound like a duck. No. Donald Duck actually is like. <laughs> I think that's just Donald Duck choking <laughs> on a Gancito. They're like, could you advertise this? And he's like. <laughs> anyway, I gave it a shot. Uh, they look delicious, they though, do. for what it's worth. Also, because I am evil, I mean, I want to bring some spice to this mail video. You should see a bag of extra flaming hot Cheetos. Oh, yes. You do not have to try them if you do not want to. I thought I would send in my favorite chips. Twice as hot. Twice as hot. I hope you guys enjoy the candy and anything else I might throw in the box at the last minute. I hope you enjoyed the Grand Canyon, and as always, let's meet back tomorrow, shall we? Sincerely, Franklin, a.k.a. 
uh, Quilava Fire Blast on YouTube and uh, Twitter. P.S. I've been taking the journey and I'm currently at day 435 in my effort uh, to say that I took the journey. God help me. Only six more years of vlogs to go and every day it does go higher. P.S.S. Taco Bell. Which would in college mean that we would immediately drop everything we were doing and go to Taco Bell, but that fortunately did wear off. Because yeah. if it wasn't, if it hadn't worn off, then I think my the, the audience and the viewers would troll me for the rest of my life and they'd just always be like, Taco Bell. Um, so first off, uh, Franklin, thank you. And also let your mom and sister know thank you as well. That is super cool that you got to go to the Grand Canyon. Um, and like raft down it, like that's awesome. Like at this point, um, you're back. So hopefully you had an awesome trip. I know that when Mal and I got to go, it was incredible and we just- We just stood on the edge and looked at it. <laughs> And that alone was like yeah. super incredible. I just loved it. So um, hopefully you had a wonderful trip. And there's so many amazing things. So the Marzatin chocolate, the Gancitos, which I'm never doing the duck voice again. Uh, Cheetos Crunchy Extra with two X's, flaming hot. Sponge? Isn't that a word that Rick Sanchez uses? <laughs> I think so. Isn't that, isn't that from Rick and Morty? He's like, Sponchy. Yeah. The cat is named Sponchy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Which would be probably S-P-A-U-N-C-H-Y instead of S-P-O-N-C-H. But still, I saw that and I was like, Rick Sanchez, is that you? Um, Baritas Pina, pineapple filled cookies, what? Holy crap. Baritas Fresa. Strawberry filled cookies, something a little more traditional. The pineapple ones, I'm like, what? I've never heard of tell of that. Uh, this is the mazapan. Uh, De, De La Rosa. Oh, I see. Yeah, this is this would be hard to open because they're like individual. From what I can tell, they're individually wrapped, so they would like break apart when you open them. And then there's also. What is? I have no idea what this is. It looks like. A caramel on a spoon? Yes! Cucharitas. Tamarind flavor. It has sugar corn syrup, citric acid, salt, chili, and artificial flavor. So it's sweet and spicy. S sweet and spicy. And, and it's probably caramelized, which is why it's And they're served on a little spoon. That's wild. Maybe you mix wild. it into like tea or... Uh, maybe. Maybe that's what it's... I've never seen anything like this before. And we've officially hit the amount of stuff where like Kepler had to come and see what was going on. Or did you just want to smell Kippy. flaming Hot Cheetos? Kippy. Maybe that's what you're over here for. What else is in there? Oh. These are chor Choritos con Chile, hot and spicy corn sticks. So kind of like a maybe slightly different oh, version of second. Cheetos. Well, these are corn sticks, so they're not gonna they're gonna taste actually quite different than Cheetos, I suppose. Interesting. Pico Ticos, which is a great name. Sugar candy. Okay. And uh, it's gonna be probably too small to see, but there's a little mascot on there, and he's a peanut, and he's wearing a sombrero. A sombrero, and I love it. I wish I wish all characters. Uh, were peanuts. Duvalin skimmed milk candy. It looks like a little pudding cup. Is that what that is? I think that's what that is. Yeah, it has to be. It even has little tiny, little tiny spoons that they include. This is neat. What is that? Slaps lollipops mix. And you can see like this one here is the blue one. Mm -hmm. But you take one and you like can fold it down and turn it into more of a lollipop. Oh. And it's like soft, like gummy. That's wild. That's so strange. Now, Mel. Yes. I am very interested because Franklin said that it was his favorite snack. The Gansitos? I'll try them. That was not what he said. It was his favorite <laughs> snack. Uh, the Cheetos Crunchy Extra Flamin' Hot. I can say, honestly, I've never had these. I've never even had the regular spicy ones. Well, then... Let's see how we do. But I want a Goncito. It has chocolate and, and jam. Well, it didn't burn my nostrils. But chocolate and jam and cake. <laughs> Mallory will always choose cake. cake. 
They don't smell like they're gonna kill me. Do you want me to try one first? Yes. And then based on my reaction- And then you're gonna lie about it, so I do try one. Lie about, I, if it's really hot, I won't be able to lie about that, you know. You're lying, it's hot. I'm out, come on now. If, it, if I was lying, would I eat two? Yes. If I was lying, would I eat three? Yes. Eat the whole mm. bag and then tell me. They're a little warm, but that's it. You can handle it. I mean it. I don't believe you. I mean it. They're fine. That's a big one. You eat that one. <laughs> Put that in your mouth. One bite. It's fine. It's seriously, it's really not that bad. It's really not. It is the hottest <laughs> thing I've ever- No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No, they're really, like, they're hot, like, they're obviously spicy, but they're not spicy to the point that, um, it's like, there's some things that are hot that you, you can only eat, like, five of them, and you're like, okay, but these are actually, you could, you could snack on a bag no, of these. No, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. Oh, my God. No, you couldn't. I think they're good. <laughs> I also like spicy things, so. I'm turning the color of the Cheeto. Are you breathing fire yet? Because that's, yeah, that, that, like that, that's as advertised. Can I have a gun seat on now? Gun seat don't take the pain away. Or as the duck would say, <laughs> I can't do it. Also, that burned. <laughs> that. Oh good, they're in here individually wrapped. I didn't want to eat two. Doing, doing that voice. I like shoved the flaming hot Cheeto dust down into <laughs> the sensitive parts of my throat. Oh, good lord. So have a bite of that and tell me what that's like. The, the cream will probably cut down the heat. I mean, it's like a Twinkie covered in chocolate, but with raspberry or strawberry. Hmm. Well, that's pretty cool then. Um, Franklin. And mom and sis, thank you for your, you know, your entire family for sending this stuff our way. Once again, I hope you had a really great time on your trip. I appreciate the snacks. Um, Mal may not <laughs> be able to eat these, but I can, and I think they're good. So I will, uh, I'll be enjoying these. But thanks again for sending this stuff our way. I really want to try the mazepam. Also, we just realized that in the heyday of Looking snacks. through all the snacks. Snacks have distracted us several times this yes. mail video. That uh, we actually missed um, another braille sheet from Franklin. Because when Franklin uh, sends us letters, he actually includes how to, includes the braille for certain phrases from like the channels. So on this one we've got, you got the blue ruby, uh, blue shell, charisma Jones, paint, blank of time, new house, Grand Canyon, and the most important one, Taco Bell. Wow. Man. Braille continues to impress me every time I, I see it. But um, I really appreciate getting these little, uh, as Franklin writes at the top, references um, to, uh, to all of the different series and stuff. That's a really cool addition. Our next package is from Calvin in San Francisco, California. <sighs> Sorry. You still on fire? I mean, I actually ate more of those Cheetos than I probably need. They're good Cheetos. Yeah, they're but, just. But uh, when you're done, you can go and you can, you can feel it. Dear Stephen Amell, hope you guys had a great 4th of July and I hope you enjoy the stuff this time. I'll keep this brief. Let's meet back in the next package, shall we? From Calvin. It says, P.S. Hope you enjoy this. And it's a little... Yoshi egg? Yoshi, it looks like a little Yoshi egg next to Calvin's name. Well, Calvin, um, I appreciate it, and I, I appreciate everything that you have sent in the past. Uh, let's jump into Calvin's package. There are Pretz. Mentai mayo. What, what, what words came out? Oh, mentai, that's like not an English word. I was like, what did she say? Mentos? <laughs> Mentos, Mentos mayo? mayonnaise is the best flavor. Mentos mayonnaise, Pretz. Oh, golly gee. <laughs> Green tea I, koala march. I'm really tempted to use these to tone down the flaming hot that's in my mouth right now, to be honest. Melty kiss. Melty kiss. Cacao style. Cacao style. 
I like the name Melty Kiss. Japanese companies come up with some really Ooh. great phrases. I want to try this products. one. It's raspberry. Ooh. I like how in the back, like I know this is supposed to be like an English translation to sell in the, in the U.S., mm -hmm. but it has the French word for raspberry. Also, um, for those who are not aware, Mao really loves raspberry. Yeah. Like that's. If I get like a candy or like a chocolate flavor mm -hmm. with like a fruit, I get like raspberry. It, yeah. If you if you can get something with like a flavor in it, like Mao loves raspberry. That's like, like if her I get favorite. My thing. Dunkin' Donuts coffee, I get the raspberry flavor. You do. Yep. You do. And they're like, "How do you want your coffee?" And I'm just like, "Black." <laughs> We also have uh, Haribo Fizzy Cola, sour, sweet, and tangy. Put it in your mouth and you'll be confused. <laughs> and Haribo- Happy Cola? Happy Cola. Wait, what? Oh, okay. One's fizzy and one's happy. I was like, what's the difference? Kids and grown-ups love it, so. Oh, love it so. I was reading that slogan and I was like, I don't understand. Love it so, that's yeah, what you were doing. Yeah, I was like, kids and grown-ups love it. So, and I'm like, what comes next? <laughs> tell me, Haribo, tell me. It's, they love it so. Oh wait, no, there is a, so the happy world of Haribo. That's their little jingle. Oh. So because they love it, the happy world exists. Don't My read into it too much. My third eye is opening right now. I've decalcified my pineal gland. I chew grapefruit, which is the other thing that Mal likes. Yes. Mal, you're, you're, is your favorite fruit grapefruit? No. Okay. It's just your favorite juice. Maybe cherries or mango. Cherry mango, your favorite? Kiwi's good. Grapefruit. Okay, we'll be here all day. Another high chews. Uh, we've got... Charlie Brown chocolate pocky. What? Is it's just normal chocolate, but it's like peanuts edition for some reason. I don't know. And on the back is a little um, Snoopy. Snoopy, and you can like take his arms off, punch him out. But what's the purpose? I don't know. The arms are perforated, and I cannot, for the life of me, figure out why. Like, what does it? Why? Is it for holding the Pocky? Like you lay him down and then he holds it under his arms? I don't know. Japan Japan likes weird stuff. Um, we've also got uh, beautiful Werther's Originals. Cocoa Cream. Ooh, that's cool. I love Werther's. The middle of these have uh, chocolate in them. And it says new and it must be new. I've never heard of that. That's awesome. Okay. Oh man. Yoshi's Woolly World for Nintendo 3DS. Oh man, thank you. Honestly, this is um, this is one of those games that we were like super interested in because um, it's so cute. <laughs> I wish that, that like there was more to it than that, but it's so cute. You act didn't you get the chance to play Woolly World? Yes. You got a chance to play Woolly World at E3, yes. right? Yes. It was we, really good. We went to E3 once, and Mal got to play. It was before it was ported to 3DS. It was still on Wii U, yeah. but otherwise the exact same game. That's awesome. Also, Poochie makes his appearance again in here. His reappearance. He's first in uh, the first yeah. Yoshi's Island. Uh, oh, gracious. Supreme Dark. Lint. 90%. That will punch. Sounds right up our alley. It does. And also, that'll punch you right in the mouth. <laughs> that says, hello, I'm Chocolate. <laughs> nice to meet you. Very cool. Thank you. Munchkin Pathfinder Guest Artist Edition. What? This is a limited deluxe version of pa uh, Munchkin Pathfinder, entirely re-illustrated by Shane White. Cool. Cool. I don't know who Shane White is, but I'm assuming that he's noted for some sort of illustrations within the, you know, fantasy game world. I don't recognize the illustrations, but they're cool. Yeah. They're really neat. Munchkin's also a really fantastic game. Kick down the door, fight the monster, grab the treasure, reach level 10, and win. We gotta get together with uh, Jarrett sometime soon and play uh, Path or uh, not Pathfinder. Well, Pathfinder fits this Munchkin again. He uh, he loves 
absolutely love Smudgekin. One more thing. One more thing? <gasps> duck Duck Goose ones. Oh man. They, their favorite wet food is probably duck. Yeah. Yeah. So um, they're these, gonna love these. These treats, they, I, I really don't think that I've seen them go as crazy for a specific type of treat as these. Um, Calvin has sent these in the past and, uh, well not this specific flavor, but. The chicken ones. The chicken ones. And they're, the cats go crazy for them. They really do. Okay. This said it was easy open. <laughs> I mean it is if you just pull it. You just gotta pull the tab. You had to you had to snap into a Slim Jim. Oh, Sagan ran right. Oh, oh you know, don't you? He can smell them. You smell? Of course he can. He's a cat. He's got that nose thing going. You down. have a good sniffer. You got a good sniffer. Where's the other one? Hey, other sniffer, come here. Kepler. Cappy. Kepler, come here. Oh, he's like, huh? Yeah, hi. Here, hi. zip the shut for me. Did you get it? You have, I have one. Two. Okay. Kepi. Here you go, buddy. Oh. <laughs> come second, on, Kepi. Second, you're gonna attack you for Kepi, him. Kepi, come here. Come on. I'm gonna put those over there and hopefully they won't go after him. Kepi, come on. <laughs> he just reached up, he's like, give that to me. Kepi, come on. Sagan's gonna attack me. He's purring. You can give it to Segs. Can you bite it? Or are you just gonna... That was my thumb, baby. <laughs> you, put your, you put your fingers in his mouth. He's like... Ah. Was it good? You had a bite, you want more? Come get the rip. Oh, now, he, now he's like, give that to me. <laughs> take it with you, take it on your journey. They love those things. They really, really, they absolutely adore those treats. They're like, where's the rest? We Cause know. you, you had only barely opened the thing and Sagan was on the floor over there and he was like, what's that? And then he just ran over here as fast as he could. That's it for now. That's it for now, but you can lick the fingers if you want, that's fine. Uh, anyway, Calvin, um, as always, thank you so, so much for all this stuff. And if the cats could thank you, they would thank you because those are seriously the cat's absolute favorite treats. They really, really love them. Our next package is from Jeremiah in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Jeremiah was from Pittsburgh. Burm, burm, burm. He it was just, a viewer of mine. I probably, I promise I won't do the rest of this. I flipped the top and this is what I found immediately. What is this? Hokitate Freight. I must remember to read the back while Louis explores this strange box with his Pikmin. Hey Steven Amal, I found these board games at the Goodwill and thought they looked interesting, but then I remembered I don't really have anyone to play them with, so maybe you and your friends can get some enjoyment out of them. Also included are a few video games and a guide that I noticed weren't on your collection list yet from Jeremiah. Uh, P.S. The previous owners of the board games kept track of the pieces very well. Hmm. Uh, Jeremiah, thank you, first off, um, for the package, whatever it may be inside. Second off, for having a name that I could do a parody song with. And then third, for, um, inciting humor right off the bat by opening the lid and seeing, uh, Hokitate Freight written on this astronaut. I love it. Absolutely fantastic. So, uh, Lego Indiana Jones and the... Lego Indiana Jones The Original Adventures for the Nintendo DS. It's in here. Beautiful Katamari for the 360, which uh, is actually a fantastic game. Um, a lot of people, when they think of Katamari, they think of like the original or We Heart Katamari, but Beautiful Katamari, also a really great game. Uh, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, which is very cool. I don't, we didn't have Corruption, did we? I don't think we have the third one. Huh. I don't think so. I actually, I don't know much about Metroid Prime past the first one, to be honest. Um, I know the first one, but then after that, I'm like, I don't know if, like, I think they're all well-liked. Because Retro, I think Retro made all of them? Does it say? It doesn't say, because they're, they're like a first-party person. Yeah, it's us. Yeah, Retro made all of them. And did you know Retro's never made a bad game? Ever. The only things they've ever worked on, I'm pretty sure, are the Metroid Prime series and Donkey Kong Country Returns and Tropical Freeze. Hmm. Like they are like whatever, five for five on wow. games. They're, they're a perfect studio. Now I'm, I'm trying not, I'm not gonna jinx them, but 
They have a lot riding on Metroid Prime 4. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. What? Mice and Mystics. Wild. This is uh, published by Plaid Hat Games, which is the same publisher of Dead of Winter, though. Oh. That doesn't necessarily speak of the development itself, but the publisher is the same. Interesting. It says, living in the walls lurk things that aren't mice, that nobody knows of, except for the mice. Oh, that aren't nice. <laughs> lurk things that aren't nice, that nobody knows of, except for the mice. Huh. I have never heard of this game. Mice and Mystics. If anyone out there watching right now uh, knows anything about this game and wants to share some info about it, uh, please do so in the comments. I'd love to read uh, what you have to say. And there's also um, 3D Blockus, or Blocus, Blockus, the exciting game of three-dimensional strategy. Uh, this like sounds or looks familiar. Um, I've never played it, but it, like the name or the logo or something definitely strikes me as something familiar. Beautiful Joe Player's Guide! That is awesome. Now it covers the PlayStation That's 2 That's a game version. I've wanted to play. You've never played Beautiful no. Joe? Oh my god, I think we have it. I hope we have it. Like, yeah, it's great. It's so full of, oh, Sagan found the treats. Honey, no, 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 no. It's so full of character. Beautiful Joe is a game that is oozing character. I remember seeing it on like extended play back in the day. Yeah, I think it, I think it was first released for GameCube and then it came to PlayStation 2, mm -hmm. which is why it says now covers PlayStation 2, which is kind of interesting. Cause like, I don't, uh, that's a, kind of a weird choice, I think, to bring it first to GameCube. GameCube didn't get a lot of exclusives like that yeah. outside of Nintendo. So that's pretty neat. Huh. Cool. That is, uh, that is super cool. Jeremiah, thank you so much uh, for all of this stuff. The games are awesome. Really great choice of games. And then Sagan is still looking He's for these. He's hunting for the treats. He's trying to find them. Jeremiah didn't send you treats. Jeremiah sent us games and you can't eat the games. <laughs> you can't, I'm not gonna let you. Anyway, Jeremiah, once again, thank you. Our last package is from Casey in Irvine, California. All right, and what does Casey send our way? There's some cute Pikmin on the box. <laughs> there is cute Pikmin. And there is There's a seems... card, and it says, hi. There seems to be a lot of stuff inside. Oh, there's a lot of stuff inside. Box. And uh, there's there's like a stealthy Kirby hiding on the card. Stealthy Kirby. He, he blends in. So let's open this up. And inside, it's a very thick card. And inside, oh, okay, this is cute. <laughs> I love this. Oh my God. Sorry, okay. So first things first, I opened it up. On the outside is this beautiful art, which uh, reminds me of Abzu. Mm -hmm. Also, you can see that Sagan is still unrelentingly looking for those treats. Honey, they are gone. <laughs> We've moved on. And when you open it up, there's, um, there's two little packs of something that has to do with Gudetama, and it oh, says, Gudetama. I forgot to include these in the list on the last page, so here they are. So we'll learn exactly what these are. But when you open it up, it's it's art of Mal and me, and it says Malamar and Pikmin George. Um, that was honestly some of the most fun I've had in a long time making a video like that. We don't get a chance to make a whole lot of live action videos. And I'm really glad that it was so well received because I do want to do more of that sort of thing in the future. All right, so now I can get on to the, uh, the contents. Dear Stephen Amau and Kitties, I am a weird and awkward 23 year old who goes by Casey. Like many others, I discovered the channel through the TRG Mario Kart tournament, but unlike many others, the first content I watched was a Q&A. While working on a tedious college assignment early last year, I found myself needing some background sound to keep my sanity in check. I saw one of the Q&As in the suggested videos list, and there is a strange appeal to listening to total strangers talk about their lives. I quickly grew fond of both of your fun and lovable personalities, and in the course of the following weeks, I binge-watched Q&A after Q&A, Tulip, I've lost count of the times I've rewatched the playlist, Twilight Princess, Battleblock Theater, etc., and the rest is history. Even though I now follow all three channels of George Media Corp, the Q&As and mail videos are still some of my favorite content on the channels, and I finally decided to contribute. 
After graduation, I moved from the lover state of Virginia to California. And as thanks for bringing daily doses of fun and joy during an anxiety-filled transition, here's a box of things from a Japanese market I discovered the other day, plus some other stuff. It wasn't until after I bought the weird Japanese food DIY kits did I realize the language barrier might make uh, reading the instructions difficult. Hopefully the visuals are enough. I wish you two all the best in the years to come, KC. Uh, P.S. I'm looking forward to Dat Okage Let's Play. Mao, I'm rooting for you on this. <laughs> it could happen. That's the one with Stan, right? Yeah. Stan, and he's like the- The Shadow King. He's like the devil. He's not the devil. He's, He's kind the of the evil shadow king. Kind of the devil. Anyway, um, first off, thank you. Um, and uh, I actually, I actually really like your handwriting. I know it's tiny, but it's clear and you can read it. So I actually really enjoy it. On the other side, it says, "Have some snacks." In this box, you will find, and there's some things. And it says, "Edible items." You can attempt to find these okay. while I list it. Good luck. Some of them may be in Japanese. Three packs of Marukawa bubble gum. I grew up with this gum and wanted to share a bit of my childhood with you two. Uh, two poppin' cookin' kits. Uh, one Okashi na salon kit thing. This is one of the poppin' kits. And uh, you don't have to worry too much about the instructions because the instructions are semi-clear, but there's also videos on YouTube of people giving, you know, visual instructions through video of how to do it. This one looks like Play-Doh. Like there's a thing and you push it down and the hair grows, you know, like the Play-Doh people? Yeah, and then you eat it? I guess so. Possibly. Yeah, it's corn syrup and sugar and stuff. Grow their hair, then eat their hair. <laughs> That's the slogan. It ends there. Uh, <laughs> one double rich matcha pocky. Oh, this is the other pop and cooking. Oh, okay. One double rich matcha pocky. You're on the hunt. It'll get easier as time goes on because you'll have less things. This one. Uh, one matcha pocky midi. I love the midis. I didn't know they made that. I don't think. I think we've had that before. I, know, I don't think I know, we've had the matcha midi. No, we've had we've had matcha and we've had midi because I know Calvin has sent um, the the one that's like a macchiato midi. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen the, the matcha ones. Um, one chocolate pocky midi. One strawberry pocky midi. Ooh, I've had the strawberry ones. They're really good. And one grape squeeze pocky. Oh, these ones are good too. Grape squeeze. One bag of high chew fizzies. One bag of fruit flavored puchow and a bag of soda flavored puchow. That's an interesting cola and logo and, word. and mango melon strawberry grape. Two bags of honey butter chips. These are apparently pretty famous slash popular in Korea. I thought you'd like to try them out. Honey butter chips. I like honey. I like honey butter. I like potato chips. That sounds good. This poor Sagan's still looking for those streets. Non-edible items. Four games. Uh, it says the GameStop box has two games inside. Part of me feels bad for dumping games I no longer play onto you, but the other part feels that they are better off with a pair of avid collectors of games than gathering dust in my room. Um, so what games are in there? Um, Soul Hackers, Devil, Devil Summoner, Soul Hackers, Shin Megami Tensei. Yep, uh, Shin Megami Tensei. Um, Title. Yep. And Rhythm Heaven. Rhythm Heaven! We actually got to play that, or the Japanese equivalent, on um, stream. Yeah. Wait, was it, oh, well, was was it, it wasn't the DS version, unless the GBA Japanese version became the English DS version, because that's happened a few times with, like, uh, Ace Attorney and games yeah. like that, so I don't know if that's a situation, but maybe. And then also... Fossil Fighter Frontier. Fossil Fighters Frontier. Interesting. And... Are you trying to read that? Because I'm out. Because of the Etrian? Cursor. Yeah, it's a T. Etrian Odyssey Untold? I think that's the word. Yeah. It's an Atlas game. Hmm. Honestly, I have not heard of that. Um, and it says one pack of origami paper. Ooh, it's pretty origami paper. 
Beautiful paper for the beautiful and artistic Mao. You are beautiful too, Steven. A beautiful, beautiful princess. And there's a wonderful drawing of me as a pretty, pretty princess from the Extra Life stream. Enjoy. Well, thank you. And I actually never really found out what these are. Take them off and look at them. But um, they're some sort of, is it gum maybe? Or like a Laffy Taffy type thing? I'm not sure. I'm gonna open this. Oh, it's chewing gum, it says right there. Oh. Chewing gum. Yeah, I thought it might be gum. Gudetama. You can't help but wonder if it's egg flavored gum. You think Because it it's Gudetama. If, if you're not familiar with Gudetama, he's the lazy egg in Japan and uh, He's so lazy. He's so lazy. There's um, <clears throat> there's a YouTube channel from the company, and there's all these little animations, and uh, they've subtitled them, mm -hmm. and they're ridiculous. They're they're worth watching for at least a few minutes because they're like, you know, you should do something, and he's like, I'm so lazy. I'm so lazy. I don't want to. And then it's like, that's it, Kudatama. And, like, and then there's a little song and a guy dressed up as an egg, and it's like, good. And he does like a little dance. Oh yeah. Yeah, we do weird things late at night before bed, sitting up looking at our phones like, watch this video of this guy in this egg costume. Before we wrap up Casey's package, I would like to try the chips. The honey chips? Yeah. Because it... <laughs> oh, it's taking right over like, here. Oh, you got them treats. Honey, you're gonna I can't be, open that. You're gonna be real disappointed. Hi. Because these are not what you think they are. Come here. Here you go. That's a weird smell to be emanating from a bag. You wanna smell that? It's not the treat, is it? It doesn't smell like meat at all. Are you disappointed? Poor thing. After he had those treats, then that was he was sold. He was like, well, I'm I'm sticking Hi. around. <laughs> Put this in your mouth. So, I don't hate it. It, it tastes as if, imagine if you will, someone, someone made potato chips and then around the part where they were gonna put salt on the chips, someone was like, maybe sugar? I was gonna say maybe butter. Or kinda maybe like butter. Kinda like popcorn would be. Yeah, it tastes more like that. It's it's not sweet. Well, it is kind of sweet. And there's like a weird sweetness. There is a sweetness though. It is like, it's not, it's not layered on as thick as salt would be with yeah. the sugar, but they're not, they're not really salty. They're sweet. There's a very weird disconnect because you just naturally expect when you put a chip shaped thing in your mouth it's gonna be salty and it's not they're good but they're really weird i need a flaming hot cheeto to take the edge off of this bag <laughs> anyway casey thank you so much for sending this stuff our way this is very generous and we sincerely appreciate it and also i'm glad that we could help you through your transition to california and may you be very successful and have a good time and also find lots of other cool you know, supermarkets where you can get neat stuff. That's one of the advantages of living in California. I mean, there's there's certain disadvantages to each state and certain advantages to some states. California has access to really awesome Asian supermarkets that a lot of other places don't. We have a Publix. <laughs> we do have a Publix. That's, that part is true. Uh, we do not have access to a lot of the stuff, which is why I appreciate when people send us these sorts of snacks, because we really enjoy these snacks, but they're not things that we can get anywhere close to us, so we, we thank you. Uh, anyway, if you're watching now and you would like to send something in, you can go to the description box down below. There's a link that'll take you to the page where it shows you where to send mail, what you can send, what you can't send, what you should send, what you shouldn't send. Where you should send it. Where you should send it. How you should send it. How you should send it. What to include? <laughs> Photos, stills, <laughs> pictures. We got it all. Uh, thank you so You're much. You're referencing a different video we did. That was the Q&A. I know. But it came out before this. So it's fine. They remember. 
Casey remembers, Casey watches the Q&As and mails. She got that and thought that it was great. Probably. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you guys next month for another mail video. And you will certainly find out why it has gained the love around the world that it had. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, I got cookies in my crawl. Cookies in your crawl? Your crawl. Your throat? Oh my god, have you never heard that term? I thought you misspoke and you didn't know you misspoke. You have never heard of the word crawl. That is a southern word for throat. Wow. I thought you knew that. No. Huh. We'll look it up later. Yeah, that's a, that's a southern word for throat. Anyway, sorry. That's a weird word for me to use, I guess, if I've never used it before.